Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Renata Singh. And I'm Kimberly Farah Singh. And it is Wednesday. Middle it is Wednesday. Week. We're almost there, Kimberly. We're almost to the end of the week. But guys, you know, we're diving straight into what's trending in news today. Um, DSS founder Karen Clark is on administrative leave or suspension from the Defense Force. This according to National Security Minister Stuart Young. And um, Minister Young had an analogy to go with the reasoning behind the um, administrative leave. And he quoted sorry I quote um, unfortunately when growing up in school one of the truisms I learned was one bad apple could spoil the barrel so as soon as we found out that it was a member of the DSS the defense force took action as they should have and they are following the rule of law and mr. Clark is now on administrative leave or suspension that's what he said minister young also went on to state that investigations regarding the DSS um, susu etc is still on Ongoing, so we need to keep updated with what's going on there, Kimberly. Yes, but the comment section there for that particular story on social media was blowing up because persons were just not having it. They were talking about alleged corruption in right. ministries, government mm. ministries, that is, etc. And yeah. <laughs> It was interesting, <laughs> to say the least, to read. But moving things over, some interesting good news. I Happy news, say. Kimberly. Yeah, right here in Trinidad and Tobago, our very own surgeons were able to remove a gallstone the size of an avocado from a 72-year-old lady, well, woman, from South, and it's gaining international recognition. Uh, the surgeons removed the stone um, from the navel. And traditionally, gallstones average around 5.5 centimeters, but in rare cases, they can grow over 5 centimeters for large gallstone surgeons up to perform an open or classical classical surgery, Kimberly. But after examining the woman's scans, um, the doctor, um, they performed a, a specific surgery. They call it a laroscopic cholecystectomy. Really interesting, and as you can see on this, which might be disturbing for some persons to look at, yeah, I would admit, but I am trying not to look at it too much. It's a bit uh, graphic, icky. Uh, I, That's I inside know. of all of us, though. Right, looks Kimberly. Similar. I don't think I'm too interested in seeing how inside looks. I, yeah, not no, not interested. But hats off to the doctors, though, Kimberly. Yes, um, Dr. Yadish Singh, Dr. Sadiq Mohammed. Um, Dr. Akila Hussein, Dr. Kirchival Ramota, and Professor Vijay Narain Singh. I hope I oh pronounced boy. all their names. Correctly. I was just about to say that. But um, well done, hats off to, to, to the doctors. Again, Kimberly, it's really nice to see Trinidad. I mean, we're but a dot on the world map. You know, it's good to see us gaining recognition in the medical field as it pertains to this specific surgery. Indeed. But guys, moving things along, um, regionally, we're seeing school beginning to, to reopen of course most schools um, have taken the approach of doing online schooling but Jamaica Jamaica has reopened for face-to-face -face school today and uh, Jamaica television network tells us more students in uniform a rare sighting since March when schools closed due to COVID-19 Monday was to be the start of a two-week trial resumption of face-to-face -face classes for 17 schools but the heavy rains delayed that to Tuesday. We ventured to Alston High School in Northwest Clarendon. Students lined up for processing, a part of the new norm. We're told that there were concerns from some students and parents, like many across the island, as the virus continues to spread. I'm still a fear for her to come in a time situation like this, but everything you can't keep, you can't keep down especially education-wise. But with connectivity issues, Miss Palmer couldn't wait for her granddaughter to return to school. I have to send her ne next door so that she can get internet. And sometimes for half days or so they are there and they can't see anything, neither that they are not getting anything from the internet. Principal of Alston High, Adrian Sinclair, says the day went well. The attendance in my estimation was pretty good and that the students adhered to the COVID-19 
protocols. They came in wearing their masks and they were neatly attired in their uniform. They were very orderly and they attended to every instruction that was given to them by teachers, ancillary staff, and they did extremely well throughout the day. Education Minister Fable Williams said the resumption was smooth, though not all 17 schools chosen open today. Mrs. Williams says the ministry will be monitoring closely the pilot which will guide the resumption of face-to-face -face classes across the island. Yellows High School in St. Thomas asked to be opened tomorrow because they have been dealing with flooding on the school grounds. Additionally, Moortown Primary and Junior High School in Portland also asked to be open tomorrow. We received reports that the parents and teachers have expressed support for the pilot initiative, and some were physically present at the school assisting with the preparatory activities. She says stakeholders will also be surveyed to improve empirical data, informing the way forward. And Anthony Log, TVJ News. Of course, this is a kind of concern for me, Kimberly, as it pertains to, you know, sending kids out to school and stuff like that. I mean, we're seeing countries all around the world rolling out different measures as it pertains to, you know, schooling, etc. Right. Um, right here in Trinidad, we still, we're still online, thankfully. And I'm, I'm happy about that, to be honest with you, because I can't imagine, you know, having kids, you know, exposed to the, this virus. We're still in a pandemic. So right. it's of concern to me. And I believe um, in Trinidad, we're not too certain as to if schools are going to be open in, in January. January. There's no clear indication of what's going to be happening. We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, but you know, in France, the schools are open over there and kids, once they're six years and older, they are required to wear a mask. In China, they reopen school in fall. Um, in Belgium, which was really interesting to read, they open schools in early September, but they entered another lockdown. So schools are closed and they're on wow. an extended uh, autumn break. Um, and well, the UK, we know they are actually in lockdown yes. as well. And despite their lockdowns, school schools continues. Are. Yes, and I think Kimberly, as well as Germany, they have a really interesting way. I, I read it this morning. Um, right. Germany, their schools are open, but the windows in the schools ha have to be have to remain open regardless of the weather, which is really, really interesting. Like extremely would you, interesting. Okay, so if you had a child who no. was in school, okay. no, 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 they, they would not be attending school, Kimberly. I, I am sorry. I, I think that we're still in a pandemic. Um, there's still cases, you know, being reported daily. Thankfully, it's not um, to the extent as it was, you know, in months gone by. But um, it's still there. That's the point. And the yeah. possibility of um, cases rising again. You know, it's there. It, it's a possibility. So, you know, I would not send my kids I feel to like one of this, the things raised by this pandemic is the fact that there is a... I mean, persons who can't afford from the persons who can't afford. Persons yes. who can't afford, their children will have the devices to access online learning. And persons who cannot afford, well, those children, they're being left behind in a lot of cases. Definitely. So it's really, really unfortunate. I mean, it's really trying to weigh yes you know the pros and the cons i guess in each country uh, it would be different because in this pandemic thing right now so if, if it's one thing we all learned it's not a one size fits yes. all and you have to take it day by day literally Correct. <laughs> Definitely. But moving things over, the USA is the world's worst hit country with COVID-19 with over 10 million cases. That's a lot of cases. France yeah. 24 tells us more. It was a day of action against COVID-19 on Staten Island as volunteers gave out free masks and told passers-by where to find the nearest free testing site. Just want to make sure that we're stopping like the spread of COVID and that people know where the testing site is. COVID-19 cases have passed 10 million in the U.S., the worst hit country. With temperatures getting colder, authorities fear even tougher days ahead. In Illinois, there are more people hospitalized now than back in spring during the first wave of the pandemic. There and in several other Midwest states, 
in Texas and in California, where there has been a surge in the number of cases, authorities are tightening restrictions to bring some relief to strained hospitals. The director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases called on people to keep up their efforts. The vaccine is on its way, folks, so hang in there, hang tough. We're going to get over this together. Among tighter restrictions, banning eating in restaurants, working out in gyms, and praying in religious institutions. Authorities calling on residents to remain indoors as much as possible, at least until figures improve. Really, really heartbreaking stuff happening over there in the U.S. because as the, you know, the COVID-19 cases continue to rise, the death toll will continue to rise. So and we just Kimberly, really have to keep them in our prayer. There is the concern of the weather changes, you know, cold and all of that. And in some states, um, hospitals are reporting, you know, exhaustion already in terms of being able to handle um, the amount of reported cases daily. So our prayers and thoughts are with the U.S. Coming up next, we take a look at what's going on with Singles Day. We'll be right back. It's beginning to look a lot like that's right, people. It's that time of year again, and we here at ACT and The Voice have got you covered. All your favorite Christmas music and movies every day. Wait, did you say every day? Jingle bell. Yes, every day. Tune into ACT and The Voice as we spread the good news of the true meaning of Christmas. No one does Christmas like us. ACT and The Voice of Christmas. Exclusively on ACTN The Voice, this is Messenger TV. Join us as John and Lisa Bevere equip and empower generations of Christians, both young and old, developing uncompromising followers of Christ who transform our world. Starting on Mondays at 8 a.m. with repeats to fit any schedule. Tune in, log in, or click on the word like never before. Stay tuned for a new experience from the Word of God with Messenger TV. Exclusively on ACTN The Voice. The Black Friday sale of China has kicked off. It's today. Uh, it's called Singles Day. Um, they've broken records with this um, specific sale that's on today. Um, just after midnight, guys, get this. Just after midnight, they um, did 53 billion in 30 minutes, exceeding last year's total profit of 38.4 billion. So, yeah, um, pandemic seems to have a real effect in terms of um, upping um, online sales and stuff like that. But Ariang News tells us more about this singles day. November 11th might seem like any other ordinary day, but in China, it marks the start of the world's biggest 24-hour online shopping event. Watchers say that with more people pent up from the pandemic, the event will break new records. Yixing Jie reports. China's version of Black Friday, dubbed Singles Day, kicks off Wednesday. And this year, the world's biggest 24-hour online shopping event is ready to break new records. Started by Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba in 2009, this year's event includes more than 350,000 brands with 2 million new products. While robot cleaners, vacuums, and other household goods are expected to be popular, luxury brands are looking to get a huge huge sales boost as millions of Chinese who have been unable to travel overseas will flock online for what experts are calling revenge spending. Also given the pandemic, health products such as vitamins and air purifiers are expected to be hot sellers. Watchers say that with so many consumers frustrated by the pandemic, this year's event will break new records. To boost sales even more, the event started on November 1st and will end at midnight on Thursday.
On pace to smash the annual sales record, total purchases already passed the $56 billion mark in the 10 days leading up to the main event through its first 30 minutes. November 11th has been celebrated as Singles Day since Alibaba founder Jack Ma started the Global Shopping Festival in 2009 with just 27 merchants. His goal was to increase online shopping on a day to celebrate single people. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. And in 2011, Renata, they would have had 11, 11, 11, so hence they got that Singles Day thing. Because Can at we... first, when I heard Singles Day, I'm like, what does this have to, to be? Yeah, to be honest with you, when I first heard it, I was like, people. wait, this is, this is a sale for single people, so what do you mean? I can't enjoy this sale? Like, at first, that was my first <laughs> initial thought when you hear Singles Day, but you know, the, the explanation definitely makes sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, the US, they would have their Black Friday sale, I believe it's only 27. So a lot of sales happening in November across, well, in China, the US. Good time to get in on some online sales. I mean, we may not get our gifts in time if you know you plan on buying a gift for somebody. Using online, yeah, Kimberly, uh, and especially like for Black Friday and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, you def by time the 27th of November, you're not going to get that in time for Christmas. But Consider you know that. what, Kimberly, if you get it on sale, you can definitely wait a few extra weeks. You know what I'm saying? You're saving on the box. So not only that, you know, out. the quality of the gift that you may be able to give that person you know, in terms of value. But then when you have to pay for customs, say, in Trinidad and Tobago, Ooh, it's pretty expensive. So maybe we might just stick to buying things in locally Trinidad. and supporting our local businesses because in a time like this, they yeah, need it. Yeah, we, we definitely need it. But guys, we're going to go to a break. Coming up next, we take a look at the world's least vis visited country. We'll be right back. We, from those encounters together, and this was a North-South game to open the season. So the team might be playing well, as we already, always say with Trinidad and Tobago. Futsal, did that great for me. Okay, hey everybody. Welcome to another edition of Field of Dreams and ACTN. My name is Steve David. I'm your host. time of year again and we here at ACT and The Voice have got you covered. All your favorite Christmas music and movies every day. Wait, did you say every day? Jingle bell, bell, bell. Yes, every day. Tune into ACT and The Voice as we spread the good news of the true meaning of Christmas. No one does Christmas like us. ACT and The Voice of Christmas. <laughs> And we know France is the most visited country in the world, but really? what is, you know, I thought the most visited country, I mean, because, you know, we're on this side of the world and I feel everybody goes to the U.S. from Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. you know, most people would travel to the U.S. I so I, I, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's the United States of America, but no, it's France. It's not, it's France, but the most unvisited country in the world. And of course, it, it has to be something we've not heard about, right, Kimberly? That would only make sense. Right. <laughs> it's Tuvalu. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of Tuvalu. And no. this is where, you, I believe the director has the um, clip of where Tuvalu is. Yep, it's the least visited country in the world. And Tuvalu is located in the South Pacific. Um, it's an independent island nation within the British Commonwealth. It's nine islands comprise small, tinily populated atolls and reef islands with palm fringe beaches and World War II sites. Um, so yeah, that's where they're located. And 
Tuvalu is actually the smallest country, the fourth smallest country in the world. They have a population of just over 11,000 persons. That's, get this right, 0.00015% of the world's population. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's really Some tiny. There. It's <laughs> really tiny. And Tuvalu has to be one of the safest places in the world to visit because crime is almost non-existent. Tuvalu, again, comprises of nine small islands. And it's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. The official language in Tuvalu is English and tu Tuvaluan. But why is it the least visited country in the world? Well, the UN has listed it as one of the islands most likely to disappear in the 21st century. Yeah, wow. you heard that right. But here are some quick fun facts about Tuvalu. They only receive about only 2,000 tourists per year. Which is very low. That is <laughs> a little bit. Uh, the, the world's smallest gross domestic product, or G GDP as we know it, in the world, they have that is $42.59 million. They have no ATMs, no credit or debit cards uh, accepted on this island. One of, they're one of 22 countries in the world with no army. Hmm. Yeah, really, that's Tuvalu, really, guys. Really I mean, subject. you know, one of the bizarre things about this country, Kimberly, is the fact that they don't have ATMs. Like, that that blew my mind. Well, I guess, you know, <laughs> it's a tiny space, so there won't be, like, much shopping or anything to do I, there. So I'm you guessing just need not, but... cash to last. Uh, I am guessing persons don't stay there very long either. So if you're going to visit Tuvalu, you probably might go for a couple of days or a week if so much. And you have to carry enough cash with you on right. that island because again no debit credit cards no AT, no ATMs that is crazy you know that and, is crazy. And in a time where we're moving away from cash yeah you know it's gonna be difficult for those persons that are so accustomed to swiping a credit card um, <laughs> they're gonna have to make sure that they do their research and this is a thing we should do right before we go to a country before we Definitely. decide to visit a country suppose you, you turn up research. suppose you turn up to Duvalu Kimberly and you're thinking it's business as usual you go with your credit card debit card whatever and you realize oopsie they don't accept these things and that's the only and you know lots of times when you're traveling you don't travel with cash right so you're going with your card so that's the other thing even though they only have roughly 2,000 visitors per year I'm sure somebody somebody has done that already <laughs> <laughs> and they would have learned their lesson one quick interesting fact though Kimberly that I read the island actually has no natural streams or rivers get this right rainwater is collected for drinking and I believe back in 2011 um, they had a little drought and they had to um, get water from New Zealand yeah really interesting okay, so, stuff okay okay really interesting right <laughs> sea yeah, water, they the probably need a say, little desalination plant Sink there. Water. Yeah, what? a desal plant. Well, I mean, for an island that is potentially going to sink in the 21st century, I don't think they would be making big investments. And like, then they have a low GDP as well, so maybe they can't really afford a desalination yep, plant. Yep, yep, yep. But we're heading across to our post of the day. Yeah, and that's Operation Christmas Child. Um, I believe they simply get a shoebox filled with one really amazing toy, and then they have these other toys to fill up the boxes, and you can tell the excitement of these children uh, to receive a present, Renata. 
Of course. I mean, I would like to receive a box as well. <laughs> but uh, on their Facebook page, they're saying Operation Christmas Child, sending the gospel to the ends of the earth. Operation Christmas Child gift filled shoe boxes oh. go to different places around the world, from densely populated inner cities to deserts and jungles. Local churches are using these gifts to share the gospel, even where the name of Jesus has never been heard. So, really interesting, you know, um, the work that they're doing is it's amazing, Kimberly. I believe um, how you can get involved is basically you pack a shoebox with a wow item they call it I believe you know that's like the big gift the nice gifts and then you fill the other um, you fill the box with other fun toys hygiene items and school supplies for children and they have different age categories 2 to 4 5 to 9 10 to 12 and basically it's with the purpose of sharing the love of Jesus Christ but guys if you want to you know connect with these people I believe we have the information in terms of um, how you can um, find them on Facebook it's at Operation Christmas Christmas child there it is that's the Facebook page you can definitely if you feel you know led to um, given that way or you know you require more information you can definitely check check them out there their numbers are there um, websites etc really really interesting initiative can be really touched my heart when I saw the video with these kids you know what I'm saying yeah. opening up um, their presence there is nothing more rewarding than making a child smile and that's just my opinion I completely agree with you Renata but we are all out of time for today's show um, yeah catch our repeats Renata when are our repeats again at 11 our, in the night and 12, and 12 noon, noon the following and Kimberly day. tell the people about our awesome Christmas movies again right so we have uninterrupted Christmas movies yes you heard that right <laughs> uninterrupted meaning no commercial breaks you can just watch that movie and there's no breaks okay guys uh, we have them at 3 p.m. Monday to Friday on Saturdays at 12 noon and 8 p.m. same for Sundays on Fridays however at 8 p.m. we have a Christmas concert um, those are uninterrupted as well so you can just enjoy you know watching those things without <laughs> having to go to commercial break and then you know you break your concentration and all of that fun stuff yes so, yeah. so we're telling you and reminding you that ACTN is the place for Christmas yes. guys we love you guys have an excellent evening bye 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 Thank you so much for viewing. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at ACTN The Voice.